Hello, my name is Rian Blom with Avaya Global Support. During this video, I will go through some items to check on your Avaya Aura Application Enablement Services server to determine the overall health of the application. Normally there is an event like a CTI link outage or call recording outage that prompts someone to check the AES. One of the most obvious things to check will be that the server has power to it and you will also expect to see some activity on the drives as well as the network interface, which is located on the back of the server. If physical activity on the drives and the NIC looks good, then you can open a command window on Windows, or run a ping from another server to the IP address of the AES server, and ensure that you get a response back. This will confirm that the AES operating system is up, the server is connected to the network, and can send and receive traffic over the network. Next we need to check the Application Enablement Services application layer state. To do that, we will need to log into the AES from a browser window. In the address field of the browser window, type https colon forward slash forward slash and the IP address of your AES server and then click on Go. You may receive a certificate warning which you can accept by clicking on Continue to this website. On the next page, click on Continue to Login. At the login prompt, you can log in with a CUST user account, which has a default password of CUSTPW. This will load the Application Enablement Services Management Console. In the top right of the page, you can find important information on your server, like the number of failed login attempts, the server software version, and offer type. You can also see whether the server has been configured for high availability and the status. Click on AE services in the menu on the left and that will load a general overview page of the AE services. From this page you can see the services supported by the server in the left column as well as their respective status. If you see offline in any of the status fields it is worth noting that these services will only run if your AES has a license installed for them. So let's say if CVLAN is not licensed, then you will see offline for that service in the status column. Typically when there is a problem visible on this page, then it is because of licensing, and you should see more detail regarding possible issues in the license mode column to the right. On the bottom of this page, you should also see that your server is appropriately licensed for the version that it is running. If everything looks OK on this page, then you can move on to the status link on the menu on the left. On the services summary page, pay attention to the server state and the date in the since column, as they may indicate a problem also. Next, select status and control. From there I would suggest to review the switch connection summary first. This reports on status of the link between AES and the Avaya Aura Communication Manager, also referred to as the CM. As you can see in this screen, this AES server has only one switch connection which is in a talking state to a processor Ethernet port in CM. We can also see that there are messages flowing both to and from the switch. The Sense column could contain valuable information. For example, if your application experienced problems at a specific date or time, and the link between AES and CM shows that it has only been up since around that same time, then the event is most likely related. So it's worth paying specific attention to the date and time in the Sense column. Clicking on the Connection Details icon will take you to a separate page showing the state of the connections to the individual communication managers or CLANs. Since we only have one link to our CM and we are using processor Ethernet, we will only see this one connection listed here. If you have more connections and experienced issues, again you can look at the Sense column to see whether any of the connections experienced an outage. The next icon from the Switch Connection Summary page is the Per Service Connection Details which breaks out connectivity per service running on AES. 
Important columns to pay attention to on this page are the connection state and the since columns. Next, if you know which protocols you are using on the AES, you may go directly to those. For the purpose of this demonstration, I will go through all services. First, we'll look at the CVLAN server summary. Here you can see since when Signal1 has been in a talking state. In the column on the far right, you can see that there is currently one CVLAN client connected and that there is messages being sent over the CVLAN link. Please note that in a production environment you would expect to see a much higher number of associations as well as messages to and from the switch. In this example we have our CVLAN client connected but it's not actively doing anything over the link other than sending heartbeats. You can click on client status which will show you the name or IP address of the CVLAN client that is currently connected to the AES. Under the DLG server summary, you can see that the connection state reports as link up and the server state is showing online, which indicates a healthy DLG connection. If you have multiple DLG links or clients, you can find the link that you are troubleshooting by looking at the switch CTI link column or the local IP column, which will show the remote host name or IP address. Next on the list is the DMCC server summary. This protocol is widely used by call recording applications and shows you the status of these applications as well as their individual ports. Sometimes these recording ports are also referred to as virtual extensions or virtual ports. In this example, I can see that the DMCC service has only been up for 3 hours and 42 minutes. The next four lines can be very useful when it comes to troubleshooting the health of your DMCC sessions. As you can see here, these numbers display a healthy DMCC session. We show a single DMCC application called Contact Store connected with only one active session. There has only been one session created since service boot. What that tells us is that the DMCC session appears to be stable. We can also see that there were 100 devices acquired and there were only 100 devices created since service boot. So that tells us that this application had no need to ever re-register any of its virtual extensions. That would also tell me that the virtual extensions are stable. You should also click on the device summary link at the top. For call recording applications you would expect to see that all the devices are in a registered state. For DMCC applications performing third party call control the state might be different since they don't always register as an instance of the station. You can also click on the session ID which will list only devices associated with that session and also provide some additional information specific to the session ID selected. Next let's take a look at the TSAPI server summary. There should only be one TSAPI link between AES and each CM. In our case you can see our TSAPI link here is using CTI link number 16 in the CM. The switch name matches what the switch connection has been administered as on the AES. It has no importance to the health of the link, but as you may have multiple TCP links to multiple CMs, labeling your switch connections appropriately will make it easier for you to identify which TCP link you are working with. Status is important. You want to see that the link is in a talking state, and then also you want to see that associations are showing against the link and messages flowing to and from the switch. T-Link status provides more detailed information on specific T-Links. If your AES has TSAPI links to multiple CMs, you may need to select the appropriate T-Link from the drop-down menu at the top of this window. From a troubleshooting perspective, the most important field on this screen is under the Flow Control or TSDI buffer section. Our server is connected to processor Ethernet in CM and in the AES and CM releases that we are using we can support a message rate of up to 2000 messages per second. On CLANs 
That value should be calculated to allow for the amount of sealants making up the transport layer between the AES and the CM. You want to check that the max flow reached doesn't consistently exceed the max flow allowed. If the current reached value is above the allowed value, then reset the max flow reached and check what the new value displays as. And that value should decrease. Some very busy sites may have an average of 500 to 1000 messages, but we don't want to see the value exceeding the max flow allowed value. Under user status, you can see which applications are connected to the TSAPI service. With DMCC running, you will always see the DMCC LCS users listed, but you want to check whether your TSAPI application is here as well. If you are investigating an issue with another TSAPI application reporting that the AES connection is down, if that TSAPI application is not listed here, then it would mean that it is not currently connected or connecting to the AES server. Now that I've covered checking whether individual services are running and also whether clients are connected to those services, I would like to run through a few tests that you can run directly from the AES management console. From the menu on the left, select the Utilities link, then Diagnostics, then AE Services. Under AE Services, let's perform a DMCC test. This test was introduced on AES Release 6.3. Complete all the required fields. Provide a valid user and password. Select the switch name and IP and populate the extensions you would like to test with. Then click on the test you would like to perform. Note that for a first party call test, it will unregister existing phones that are registered on those test extensions. It is expected to see that all the results passed. It is important to note that this test assumes that all the information you provided on the previous page is correct. The nice thing about this test is that it automatically opens a DMCC session and performs most of the same activity that a third party DMCC application might perform. So it's really effective test to use when you are troubleshooting some DMCC issues. The next test is TR87. The TR87 test is used to check functionality AES provides to Microsoft OCS, LCS or Link clients. The first test is to test the TR87 transport and you should expect to see success for that test. In the TR87 service test you will need to provide a valid SIP URI and TEL URI for an existing user and the settings provided will need to match what you have administered for this user in your Active Directory. Again, you expect to see a success message for this test. The last TR87 test is a make call. Again, you need to provide a valid SIP URI and TEL URI to perform the make call from, as well as a valid TEL URI that will receive the call. The last test we will have time to demonstrate in this presentation will be the TSAPI test. Select the T-Link you would like to test with. Populate a valid TSAPI user and password and two extensions to place the call between. When you click on Dial, the test will use the TSAPI service to initiate a call in the CM. You want to see that this test succeeds also. That concludes this video on some items you can check to determine the health of your Avaya Aura Application Enablement Services server. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions and feedback at mentor at .com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.